everyone, it's Anthony Allen Ramos, and I'm so excited today. Singer, songwriter, Lawrence Rothman's latest album, Good Morning America, is set for release on July 16th. And their latest release, Not A Son, candidly addresses Rothman hurt at their parents' inability to accept their gender identity and queerness, as well as their general rejection of gendered language like son, and man to describe themselves. Hi, Lawrence, happy Pride, how are you? I'm so great, how are you doing? Good, before we talk about the music, let's talk about Pride because I noticed you posted something on Instagram that I thought was very important. It said that Pride is not just rainbows and parades, it's more, so I guess a good opening question is what does Pride mean to you? I mean, for me, it's, it's wonderful to celebrate it in a celebratory way, of course, mm -hmm. I'm not, of dogging um, that idea but for me it's more about educating a lot of people who um you know are sort of outside of paying attention to what is you know going on um right now with regards to sort of equality um i come from a place that was very close-minded and when you growing up like my outward expression of how i dressed and how i looked was very much frowned upon um, and I struggled uh, a lot with trying to feel comfortable in my own skin, but also just wanting to wear and dress the way that uh, felt natural and authentic to me and, mm -hmm. and being very accepted in the community that I was in. And so for me, it's, you know, bringing these ideas and, you know, bringing it to communities and, and to people like that I know of that, you know, are very kind of closed off and closed minded about, uh, you know, how, how people are, want to express their sexuality and their freedom to just be themselves. And that actually lends itself right into to talk about the new song that just came out, Not A Son. Uh, you know, I think obviously, like I mentioned, it's a very, well, this entire album for you is very much a healing process, very personal. But with this song specifically, you know, taking on gender and gender identity, Tell us a little bit about what this song means to you and why it was so important for you to write it and then also record it. Well, when I was growing up, I very, uh, you know, when I was very young, I identified uh, not, I didn't really feel like a boy or a girl. Uh, and my mom used to love the movie E.T. So she, she used to call me like her little E.T. And, uh, and I would dress very, um, you know, I would go, I, we, we had a store called Venture, which was like a Target, and I would go straight to the girls section and grab a girl's shirt, but then grab a boy's pants. And, you know, I, and I was very, and it was just a natural idea for me, you know, to, to want, I was just what I liked, you know, and um, I was homeschooled for a little bit. And then when I entered the public school system, I quickly, uh, you know, started to realize that, wow, the way I dress and the way I think and the way I feel is wasn't what was normal inside the classroom um even even with regards to the teachers you know um and my mother was always very accepting of it my father had a hard time with it and i didn't like to be called a son really um and my birth name is jason and so um jason lawrence rothman and so my mother would call me a son as in like the sun in the sky like jay's son <laughs> and so that was sort of our our work around with it because it was, you know, when you're young, you don't have a way to very much articulate exactly in words how you're feeling inside, but you, you know, the, the, the art that you draw or the clothes that you wear show your parents how you're feeling. And so my mother identified that and was trying to sort of make it so it was a scenario where I wasn't, you know, constantly in a gloom and doom over, you know, being uh, not sort of like how the other kids are, you know. Yeah, and so, you know, you basically then you, you're basically saying that, you know, there really wasn't this non-binary identity at that point when you were coming up, when you were growing up, is that correct? No, there was, I mean, I grew up, I came to age in the late 90s, and so that was definitely not, there was no, and, and I was in Missouri, so there was, you know, there was no word for that, you know, mm -hmm. uh, and my mother liked Prince, and I liked Prince, and we, you know, we could see it in performers. And so these performers would give me sort of a confidence to outwardly be myself. Um, but, you know, I got bullied a lot and I went through a lot of turmoil mentally and physically. Um, and, you know, I'm 
in the nineties, you know, I don't think people were just closed minded. I just don't think it was, it it was a thing that nobody knew how to articulate, you know? Well, I guess, yeah. And I, I, I'm, you know, during pride month and beyond, I I think it's so important that we have these conversations around pronouns and gender identity, because obviously thinking about when someone like Demi Lovato comes out and says, I I am, you know, non-binary, I want to use they, them pronouns. Are you hopeful that more people will be receptive and, you know, just more understanding of what it means to be, you know, someone that identifies as non-binary? Yeah, I mean, I think, I mean, thank God that there's pop stars, you know, who are comfortable in their own skin to express it verbally through interviews and, and, and outwardly into the world, because I think, you know, popular figures can help society, you know, feel like this is an acceptable thing. It can help young people and people who are, you know, older too, that are, that have been confused about, you know, their pronoun and, and how to articulate that to go like, oh, I relate to that, you know? Um, and for me, I didn't really have that when I was, when I was coming to the realization that this is how I felt, you know, I just had artists that I assumed felt like me, like Prince possibly could have. And, and I, I love this movie, Velvet Goldmine, where it felt they're wearing makeup and it, I don't know, I could relate to it, you know? So I always would, find things in arts in the arts and music and movie that felt like close to me like the cure robert smith felt felt like that to me you know um and so but now you know having actual public figures express that i think is is something that's that is necessary you know and yeah and I, I imagine like people that listen to your music or you know see demi lovato talking about it i think i like imagine all the young kids out there that see someone talking about you know, I don't identify as female or male, I, you know, and I just, there's such power behind that. And I think kids can really feel represented and seen. Um, so yeah, I'm, I'm so glad that you're so open with that. Um, thinking about this whole album, I think your last album, it's been about four years, right? Four yes. years? Yeah, yes. and obviously was so beloved and critically acclaimed. And I know this new album that's coming out July 16th uh, called Good Morning America. Um, is very personal and I know it's extremely meant for you as like a healing process. So what was it like to kind of go so deep into a lot of hard times and a lot of heavy stuff in your life and to write about it and then put it out for the world to listen to? Um, you know, COVID, I think for all of us, regardless of how, you know, how much you wanted to get inside your own head or not, it was sort of by default a, a, a time where um, we all had to kind of reflect, right? Because they're, you know, you're you're confined to your to your space, and nobody could go to work, and, and et cetera, et cetera. And so, um, I am prone to sort of depression and things like that. So I I knew instantly once I saw that the lockdown and things like that were going to be a thing for a while. Um, I thought it was a good time for me to sort of explore. Uh, emotions inside of my body and my head that I and, and, and things that have happened in my past that I haven't addressed and uh, I you know um, did a lot of like um, zoom therapy and I went to Missouri uh, to the Lake of the Ozarks where I have a family cabin and and did a lot of writing and spent a lot of alone time uh, doing therapy and meditation and and in sort of coming to terms with traumas and things that have happened in my past in a way that felt like the most healthy is way to use my time during COVID. And I had a lot of friends who did the same thing. And, and in some ways that was the blessing of COVID was uh, some people who were been struggling with things in the past who had never had that moment to slow down, to just address you, you know these issues um, could utilize that period. And so I utilized that period to do that. And it, it, I, I, I was able to write a record um, you know, because of that. Yeah, and I think I first got turned on to this new project with Thrash the West, with um, which features Amanda Shires, who's so incredible. That song in particular also is very personal, and it goes into, I believe, a previous sexual abuse or assault that happened to you. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah. Um, Go ahead. Yeah. Uh, I mean, yeah, it was something that obviously I, you know, I thought about and it's been inside of me for you know decades but I had never written about it and writing poetry or short stories or songs for me is a is like a form of sort of venting and you know sort of casting out the the demons um but that was a subject I never wanted to go near and uh I was able to do that through therapy and that song was a yeah it was a result of that 
how, uh, you know, having such a, you know, a, a delicate topic, but I guess how um, special and how, I guess, did it change the whole process for you to have someone like Amanda Shires, you know, want to be a part of that project, which obviously tells, you know, a very personal story. You know, it did. She, uh, you know, I met Amanda from that, that, um, that collaboration and I sent her the lyrics and the song at first and she was very moved by it and, and, and uh, we became very close and, and, and we're, we're really good friends right now. And I, uh, I produced her latest record that'll come out next year. And we explored ideas like that and some of my other songs that I, I would sort of bounce it off of her. Like, should I put this song on the record? And, and she's, a, she's a fellow poet too. She, she writes a lot of poetry. So she um, understood the, the uh, you know, casting out your demons through poetry and through words and, and sort of helped me um with even other songs uh, as a friend just sort of go like hey you know what just go go there with it and i mean i recommend that for any, anybody who you, even if you're not a writer just if you got some darkness and you just write it you know you feel so much better <laughs> when, yeah. when it's when you've written it down and gotten it out of your system it's almost like a journal you know <laughs> That's actually a great point. Cause I, at some point I was going to ask you, you know, what your advice was. Cause I think queer people having to be, you know, away from a lot of people. I mean, things are finally getting better, but mental health during the pandemic for queer people was very tough. So yeah. So you're saying that, you know, just get those thoughts out and write them down on paper. That's great. Yeah. It, you know, when you, when you just write down that thought, there's something about the, the act of writing it that it's like, you almost can have to take a deep breath after that. And I've, I've said that, you know, I got a lot of people who DM me on Instagram and uh, ask me questions regarding this type of thing. And I always say that, and I would say nine out of 10 times, I get a response back going like, wow, Lawrence, that, that really, that really helped. It does. It sounds maybe corny or simple, but it really does, does do something. Yeah. Well, no, I'm so glad you shared that. Um, you know, I want to go back because I know you spent a lot of time in Nashville um, and thinking about, you know, Amanda and the high women with obviously Marin Morris and Brandy Carlisle. I do feel like Nashville and is in a, a moment of change. I feel like we're having more out artists that are, you know, in country music or in the country rock vibe. Do you feel that, you know, that kind of change is happening finally and that you know the acceptance for queer people in Nashville and, and in the biz is kind of opening up a little bit I really do I mean I've spent a lot of time in Nashville since December uh, I've been there a lot working in studios working with a lot of different musicians a lot of different artists and things like that and I didn't know what to expect going down there um because yeah. you know like I said I'm from Missouri and things like that when I go back it's still not very accepting of a lot of things and uh it between brandy carlisle and a lot of other artists uh the Os osborne brothers and things like that i feel like they're you know that scene and that music is really uh you know starting to transform and and, and it's to me it's amazing because country music is one of the most popular musics in america right and so the more our stories can be inside of their songs you know um i feel like it's going to make pretty significant dent in culture here in America uh, of how regular people uh, think about, you know, people like ourselves, you know, um, and, 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 you know, country music, I think is the number one selling music next to hip hop, you know, mm -hmm. so that's a lot of folks, you know? <laughs> yeah, there's a lot of opportunity. And I really feel like, you know, with artists like yourself and like so many of those others that we talked about, it's like, you know, just, it's like, we, if we keep pushing and keep making great music, then, you know, I think, hearts and minds will change. Um, you also, on this new album that's coming out on uh, July 16th, recorded with the great Lucinda Williams, who is also fantastic. What is that track all about? And uh, what was it like to get to work with Lucinda? Actually, when you say her name like that, I actually got the goosebumps. There's, I know, she, yeah. It gives me thinking, because right when you say her name, I hear her voice. <laughs> uh, she's one of my, I mean, gosh, she might be, Leonard Cohen and her are my two favorite singers of all time. Um, and uh, that was a dream come true for me to work with her. I wrote that song, Decent Man, uh, just sort of question. It was during, I wrote it during when Trump was at the height of the chaotic, you know, summer of last year. And um, 
And I just, you know, it's just the question, are there really any decent men left? It's like, you know, there's just so much corruption and so much just bigotry and just awfulness at that time that that was just being thrown at us from every direction. And I wrote that about that. And I, I really, in my mind was like, God, if this could be a duet with Lucinda Williams. So I imagined in an imaginary way, <laughs> me singing it with her as I was writing it. And then when I was done, I was like, you know what, what the hell? You only live once. Let me just send it to, to her manager and see. And I did, and she was moved by it instantly. And they got back to me and it was sort of like a dream come true, you know? Um, That's incredible. It's like, just put it out there, manifest it. And you know, all you can do is try, all, you know, the, yeah. they can, all they can do is say no. And then they, when they say yes, how amazing is that, right? Yeah, yeah you, you, you struck gold at that point. <laughs> Who else? I know that it's um, this album is coming out soon, but is there any other queer artists or any other artists that are on that dream list to collaborate with? I love Christina the Queens. Um, uh, love, love her. One day that would be a dream, and Saint Vincent would be a dream. Um, yeah. Love Saint Vincent. I mean, her. She is the most talented guitar player of the 21st century. <laughs> oh, I would right. love ever just in my studio I just, I just want to listen to her play guitar <laughs> mm -hmm. I know right that sounds like a dream um yeah. things are getting better artists are slowly getting back out on the road are you planning to you know do any kind of live socially distant shows for the new album that's coming out in July yeah I'm uh you know every week things are changing very rapidly with regards to live shows and for me um I love the live show experience uh, mm -hmm. as a audience member and as a performer and so i'm i'm very very anxious to get back out there and i'm going to be doing as many live shows as i can possibly do in the safest way possible creative i have some creative ideas to do of how to do some things in in corners of america that like oklahoma and things like that that aren't the numbers aren't very high with vaccination and i have some creative ideas of how to how to do some shows there social distance shows but yeah and how important to like go to a place like Oklahoma where really needs to hear the stories that you're telling and the messages in your music. So that's a great, you know, way to look at it. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I like to hit the corners that nobody likes to go to because I think like, hey, there's people that, that are like me that, you know, I think w would benefit from some good music. Yeah, totally. Well, I mean, power of representation and hearing that is, is so, so important. Um, and I hope that I get to see you on the road soon. And just to remind everyone, Not A Sun is out right now to stream, so go find it. And then the full album, uh, Good Morning America, will be out July 16th. So Lawrence, it's been a pleasure to catch up. Happy Pride. Congratulations on the music. And like I said, I hope to see you on the road. Yes, much love to you. Awesome, love to you. Thanks so All much. Right.